Hello, it's Robert Lee Moulton, and today we're going to be looking at how to vent your radon reduction system through the rooftop. This is the most aesthetically pleasing of all the radon installations, and it's quick and easy and keeps you safe and off the rooftop. So let's have a look at this. Okay, we're starting at the basement floor. Your 3-inch pipe is actually going to be coming from the floor slab. Uh, as we 45 over against the wall, we're going to be climbing up the wall. And as we reach the top area, we'll have a 90 degree fitting that will exit us through the top sill plate. And actually that will enter us into the garage area, which we're going to start from. Okay, now this is a three and a half inch hole cut through the sill plate. Um, and we're going to cut a length of three inch pipe to go through that hole and mount up with the section that we just looked at going into the basement floor. Okay, from that point, we will insert that pipe through the hole and then we'll have a 90 degree fitting as you see here that fits onto that aiming up toward the ceiling area okay and once that's glued together you'll notice there's a little bit of a gap still even though the fitting is tight to the wall you're gonna have a little bit of a gap um, you're gonna want to use a plumb bob and I would say this is your ceiling hole right here I would say use your plumb bob from the ceiling measure it down till it lands into that hole of the 90 degree fitting um, once you have that measured up, then you can actually drill your three and a half inch hole through the ceiling and you'll have a perfect fit from the ceiling straight into that 90 degree fitting below. Okay, and you're going to take your three inch pipe, cut it to length, go ahead and um, most of the time you can use the full 10 foot length that they come in. Uh, sometimes you might have to cut down a little bit depending on how tall your ceiling is in the garage. But you want to insert the top portion of your pipe in through the ceiling first. So you're going to run that up into the ceiling and then back it down onto the 90 degree fitting. And be sure to glue that. And you'll have a nice clean look. It should look like this when it's all in. Okay, 90 degree all the way up through the ceiling. Nice clean look. Okay, now we go into the attic area, and you'll see we're coming up roughly about eh, maybe six inches or so, and we're entering into a three-inch rubber coupler, which also enters into the bottom portion of the fan. So as you see, the fan just mounts straight on top of that pipe. If you have to put a fitting uh, 45 to get the fan to another location, maybe to avoid studs or something, or to just come out at a desired point of the roof, that is fine to do. Um, just try to keep your turns down to a minimum as you know it will restrict flow the more turns you have but uh, at this point we're able to come straight into the fan and here's a top view of the fan you'll see the rubber coupler right on top like that and this allows us then to connect the final exhaust through the rooftop but this is the top portion okay and then we're gonna need to wire the fan so as that fan is in you'll see that the wiring comes off to the side I find the easiest way to do this is to just install an outlet box to one of the studs um, and simply done like this. Once that outlet box is mounted, you can just uh, put an end on your cord and plug it straight in. That way you can disconnect it if you want to by just unplugging. Otherwise, um, it's pretty much the simplest route. You can hardwire your fan directly into, let's say, the garage outlet, um, which is also mounted in, in the attic. So uh, if you, you know, prefer to do a hardwire, that's fine as well. But either way, it seems like the, uh, the outlet is the easiest way to go. Okay, so from the top portion of the fan, we're looking at this 45, little 45 assembly. Um, and this just gets me directly in the middle of the two rafters. That's where I wanted to be, so, you know, not very far over. Um, and then we shoot straight on up through the roof at that point. But as you can see, it's a pretty minute little 45 there. And when we cut through the roof, um, we're going to use a special, it's called a cozy collar. It's a special type of roof flashing. And... Um, it comes with its own little template and you're going to want to cut this template out exactly the way it is try to be pretty accurate with that because the boot fits in there nice and snug and you don't want to overcut too far uh, just to keep a good seal so I've put a couple pilot holes in there and you can zip through there with the saws on in no time you'll have that cut out and that will look like this when it's cut you'll have a nice clean square okay and like I say the saws all zip right through that and just be real careful that you keep it as accurate as possible um, the boot, as you see right here, does come with, actually comes with six studs, but we're going to put in the first four studs before the boot goes through the ceiling. And um, as you can see, I've got the studs in here at the moment, and I'm actually going through at a diagonal level. Um, 
you're going to also want to put a bead of gasket sealer, which this also comes with the kit, uh, all the way around the perimeter of this boot. Go ahead and put a nice bead all the way around, and then when you put this boot through the hole, you'll actually hold it in the middle, not like I'm holding it on the side because uh, this was just for the photo to show you how it goes through. If you hold it in the middle, you won't get any of that sealer on your arms or your hands, and you'll be able to get it through and then pull that boot straight back down into the square much easier. Okay, so there it is going through, and then here it is when you pull it back into the hole. You'll see we got the studs right here, all four studs, and then what you're going to want to do is go ahead and screw in now those extra two. So you'll have all six. Screw those extra two studs in. And also with the kit, you'll have two plates that mount on either side of that boot. And you'll want the excess of the plate to be on the outer portion of the boot, you know, going, going to the outside. So put it across the three mounts and put your nuts across the a bolts, all three of those. And you're going to do that on each side, as you can see right here. And what we want to try to do is get an even balance all the way around when you're tightening. So just uh, make sure it's pretty balanced. You don't want to get too uh, out of control with tightening them down. They don't need to be cranked down as hard as you can get it. Just get them nice and snug, but make sure they're balanced all the way around. The point is, is that this boot is somewhat pliable and the gasket sealer and everything, when this pulls itself down onto the the shingles, it's going to make a, a, an excellent seal. So you want as much of an even balance from top to bottom as you can get. So that's all I'm saying is just try to be balanced with your tightening. Okay, and as we move on, you'll see that now our exhaust pipe is going to be going through that boot and fitting right into the top portion of the fan that we looked at earlier. Uh, I would say six to eight inches is plenty to go through the top. Make sure that you cut for that little excess. Um, run the pipe through the boot first and then twist it as you pull down into the fitting. Of course, glue that in. And as you twist it, it'll just keep that pipe nice and snug through the boot. It'll make a great seal, and uh, everything should look nice and clean. As you can see right here, there's our 45 out of the fan, straight on up through, and uh, pretty clean look. Works great every time. So let's look at the final product of that. This is what you'll see on the outside. And as you'll notice, that boot is nice and snug up against the, the shingles there. Uh, gasket sealer underneath, you can't go wrong. It's going to be a great seal. Many people think it's it's much better than the typical flashing. Um, but the bottom line is it, it keeps you off the roof and the, and the real steep roofs that you may be on. Um, much, much safer and uh, looks like to be much more effective for most people. Um, so this is the finished product and what it should look like. So... Would you like to have a detailed step-by-step -step guide showing you exactly how to install a complete radon reduction system in your own home, taught by a licensed radon mitigation technician and guaranteed to save you hundreds of dollars? Friends, I've put together an ebook that is from top to bottom, step-by-step, -step, and it is detailed out with photos from on the jobs. And um, I've put in hundreds of systems, and this is about as detailed as it gets from top to bottom. Um, any type of person that's, that's somewhat handy with, with uh, working around the house can, can install the system. But I will say that if you're not comfortable doing that, you could hire a handyman to put this system in just by giving them the instructions in this ebook, which they would be able to do relatively easy, would still save you hundreds of dollars. Um, it's the best thing you can do for you and your family. And remember, radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer reported by the EPA. So do not let radon be a threat to you and your family. Win the fight against radon. Install your own radon reduction system in your home today. It's easy to do and is going to save you hundreds of dollars. So friends, go to radonprotection.com and that's where you'll find this ebook. Again, that's www.radonprotection.com. Go there and you'll find all the information to install your own radon reduction system in one afternoon. Save hundreds of dollars doing it. Thanks very much for watching this, and we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you much. Have a great day.